The NCBI Sequence Viewer is an interactive graphics component that is available for use by anyone. It displays sequence data in their annotations, such as genome assembly components, gene structure, sequence variation, and much more. This video focuses on embedding the viewer into your own web pages so that you can provide to your colleagues more than just a static image. You can embed a simple viewer with a predefined set of annotation tracks or an enhanced tool, allowing data upload, track configuration, and tooltips. If you want help using the viewer, we have a link to a playlist of video tutorials at the end of this video. You can also find that link, along with extensive help documentation, on the main sequence viewer page shown here. Much of this video's content, along with more detail, is found in this link, the NCBI Sequence Viewer Embedding API. Let's first look at three uses of the viewer on NCBI web pages. Then we'll dive into some specifics of the embedding code. Here's an example of a gene database record, which has the viewer embedded into the Genomic Regions, Transcripts, and Products section. We've added annotation tracks for genes, SNPs, and so on. The second example shows the viewer in the Thousand Genomes browser at NCBI. And the third example is from Primer Blast, where the viewer is configured to show a graphics view of the primer pairs in relation to the template sequence. Let's now look more closely at the code. I'll be working through a few examples that we've posted on the FTP site, so let me first show you where to find those. From the main documentation page, follow this link to the embedding API. Then in the introduction section, use the link archive examples. That will download this small gzip file, SV using API, that contains the examples. Here is example one as it appears in a browser. I'm zoomed all the way out. And here is the page source for example1.html. Notice that only one line is necessary in the head section to initialize the div. That's script type equals text backslash JavaScript. And then the source URL pointing to the sviewer.js at NCBI. Then to load a specific view, that is the desired data tracks, div is used to provide an ID name, class, and the data autoload parameter. In this case, both class equals seek viewer app and data autoload are needed. You also need to supply an app name, and we strongly encourage you to prefix this with your organization or institution name. Spaces are not allowed in the name, but underscores are, and you should avoid using trademark or copyright symbols. The app name allows us to better allocate the necessary resources on our end. We also recommend that you separate parameters in href with and amp semicolon, rather than just and. Modern browsers do tolerate and alone, but using and amp semicolon helps to avoid browser errors. In this simplified example, Sequence Viewer supplies a default set of tracks based on the molecule ID, human chromosome 1 here. In the next example, we'll supply parameters in an HTML href element. Although the embedding API documentation provides a lot of detail on viewer parameters and syntax, a great way to start coding your own page is to use one of our viewer pages. Adjust it to your liking with the zoom function and tracks menu and so on. Then use link to this page to examine the code and borrow the settings you want. For example, here is a view where we've added a marker but let's say you want a variation track. So use tracks, configure tracks, and add for the variation set, dbsnip build 149 all data, and click configure down below. Now click on link to this page, and you see three windows. The first two contain a link you can use in a browser to return this exact view. The third box contains code for embedding this view in your page. You can select either Embed Code for iframe to embed Sequence Viewer in the most isolated way, or Whole Page Example to embed the viewer as part of your page. It has both the script in the head element and the div element with the track parameters, including sequence track, gene model track, SNP track, and so on. What I just showed is very similar to example2.html, which uses automatic initialization where you supply parameters in an HTML element and Sequence Viewer takes care of the rest. 
Recall that both Class Equals Seek Viewer App and Data Autoload are needed for the automatic initialization. But what if you want to supply parameters as the result of some operation? For example, a user choice. Example 3.html illustrates such an application. Here, a user selects from a list of human chromosomes. I'll choose chromosome 5. And the viewer displays a default set of tracks for the RefSeq chromosome 5 record, this NC accession version number. Looking at the HTML, you see these options in a select element that is activated upon user choice and invoked in a JavaScript function. In the final example, you see how to add your data and display it on an NCBI sequence. This view is displaying data from a bed file located on an FTP site. Your data needs to be on a publicly available FTP or HTTP service and in a format accepted by the viewer, including bed, fast A, GFF3, GVF, GCF, Wiggle, Muscle, and so on. Let's look at example 4.html. These data come from human chromosome 1, so we set ID to that accession number. This is the FTP location, and we've set the display initially to show the region from 110 megabases to 120 megabases. That concludes the demonstrations here. Be sure to see this Embedding Examples page, which shows many more ways to work with the content, including HGVS and SNP search options, graph overlays, event listening, and so on. This page also has our contact email, so please send feedback and questions to sviewer-service at ncbi.nlm.nih.gov.